this is your estate, huh? Some inheritance. Anyway, it makes me an heiress. You better keep it quiet before the city makes you hold this junk away. Well, as long as we've driven clear out here, we might as well take a quick look at it. Okay. Cabin's been open since the police investigation. What's that? Well, that must be the police diagram showing where they discovered Captain Weatherby's body. Oh, here we are. You know, it's a funny thing they never found out who killed the old geezer. Maybe we'll find out from H.H. H. Van Buren. Van Buren? You still tune in on that big phony? Man who lifts the veil, huh? Okay, David, go ahead and laugh at him. But just remember, he solved all those other crimes. Oh, darling, don't be so naive. He always plays safe and names somebody that's already dead. he would probably try to pin this one on John Wilkes Booth. Maybe so. But anyway, he claims Uncle Eli had a fabulous collection of diamonds hidden somewhere on this old ship. He might tell us where it is. Listen, if that jerk knew where it was, he'd been out here months ago, wearing a jeweler's eyepiece for a monocle. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be anything in here. Someone had been staring at me. I guess it's just my imagination. Well, I don't wonder if this place would get on anybody's nerves. Let's get out of here. I wonder why the old boy had that skull holed up in dry land. Well, he intended to spend the rest of his life on it. Uh, he sure spent it quick. Yeah, all in one place. <laughs> find that Jerry Gilpin any place. Well, what are you worried about? Nobody listens to his commercials anyhow. You read it. Me? Sure, go ahead. Oh, no, let me on the air. Pick it up. Gosh! God bless you. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> Wong Moi Song. Chinese. Forget old-fashioned superstitions. Good wishes in any language never cured a cold. That third sneeze calls for action. And action means Conroy's cold compound. And now we bring in the man who reconstructs and reveals the solutions to crimes which for years have baffled the law. Mr. H. H. Van Buren, the man who lifts the veil. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In my third installment last Friday night of the famous Captain Weatherby murder case, I set the stage for the scene in his cabin aboard the ill-famed schooner known along the African coast as the Black Joker. On that fateful night, the eccentric old captain was reading his Bible his faithful dog lying at his feet suddenly growled at the sound of footsteps outside the cabin door. Quiet, boy, quiet, muttered the captain. 
He listened, and the dog growled again as the sound was repeated. <coughs> Who's there? Who's there, he called. But no one answered. searched the deck for his unseen callers as silently as the black knight. Brawny arms reached out to grab the old skipper. The giant beast tore in with bared fangs. A guttural voice demanded, Where are they? Where are they, those diamonds? Hello. No, no, they're mine. Yes, this is Miss Woods. I must see you immediately. It's very urgent. Matter of life and death. Yes. Around the yes. And the men were locked in a death struck. There was a sickening. Are we alone? What? I'm Mark Gruber, attorney at law. Well? I have an appointment with you next year. <laughs> Aren't you a little ahead of time? Fortunately, I am. Why did Van Buren have to dig up the Weatherby murder case? It was forgotten, dead. Oh, but it's very interesting. Well, naturally it is to you, being the grandniece of the captain. I'm not exactly proud of that, the old pirate. I'm not interested in your sentiments, Miss Woods. I want to wash my hands of the whole business before it's too late. Too late? Van Buren thinks they're all dead. He'll find out. I don't get it. Well, I haven't time to explain. I'm here to execute Captain Weatherby's will and assign the estate to you. You needn't bother, Mr. Gruber. I've seen the black joker and you can have her. Not me, young lady, not me. As I said, the will was not to be executed until next year, but I'm not waiting another minute. Now, besides the black joker at Hurricane Point, the remainder of your legacy is in this package. You don't suppose there could be anything of value hidden on the old ship, do you? Well, if there is, it won't be hidden long with that idiot broadcasting it to the whole world. Please, not until after I've left. Now, Miss Woods, I wish you luck. Goodbye. Hello, Jarvis. This is Miss Woods. Is David there? Oh, will you tell him I can't see him tonight, please? I'll phone him in the morning. Thank you. Detectives assigned to the Weatherby case sailed for Cape Morrow in Portuguese Angola. But their long journey was to be in vain. Ten years of relentless search and investigation has failed to bring the killer or killers of Captain Weatherby to justice. So next Friday night, I shall lift the veil on this mystery which has baffled criminal science. Ladies and gentlemen, I shall name the man. Heal that cold the easy way with Conroy's Cold Compound. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'll murder that Gilpin for not showing up. You read it great, Curly. Better than Gilpin. If that guy has any talent, it must be in his brother's name. Mr. Connery wants to see you, Mr. Van Buren. He's in sponsor's room four. Uh-oh. Don't worry, I'll handle the old boy. Hello, Mr. Conroy. How'd you like the broadcast? Very much, Van. But I don't think this gentleman appreciated it. Well, maybe you don't like mysteries. You should force yourself. This is Inspector Norris of the New Jersey State Police. Well, I'm very glad to know you, Inspector. I paid that fine in Hackensack, so there's Mr. No Van Buren, there's something I want to know. Anything to oblige an officer. Who killed Captain Weatherby? Oh, now you'll have to wait just like everyone else. Mr. Conway doesn't even know, and he's the sponsor. Well, that's right. We can't trust anybody. <laughs> Mr. Van Buren, I have a warrant for your arrest. All right, I'll buy tickets to the policeman's ball. Anything else, Mr. Conroy? There sure is. I'm arresting you for obstructing justice and withholding evidence. Say, who thought of that? That's a good publicity stunt. What a slogan. Van Buren lifts the veil direct from jail. What do you think, Mr. Conroy? Splendid idea. I think it's Yeah, great. but it isn't going to work that way. 
You're going to tell me right now or I'm taking you over to Jersey where we have methods of finding out things and it doesn't take a week. But wait a minute, I thought you were kidding. You can't do that. Yes, I can. But I was... Yes, I can. These are extradition papers. But if it gets out before Friday night, I lose 15 million listeners. That's your business. Mine is to nab the killer of Captain Weatherby and it's been my business for 10 long years. What do you think, Mr. Conroy? Well, I... I guess you'll just have to tell him. Yeah, but think of what it does to my Crosley rating. You're breaking my heart. Come on out with it, mastermind. It was a fellow named Louis Morado. Yeah, I've been smoking him for years. Now, who was it? Okay, it was Manuel Dezetta. Manuel Dezetta, huh? <laughs> What's so funny? You're to be congratulated, yeah, Mr. Yeah, but I'm Van right. Buren. I can prove it. This man's really clever, brilliant. Yes, sir, you're an astounding young fella. Only I'm surprised that you didn't find out that Manuel Dezetta and Captain Weatherby were the same man. What? Yeah, someday when I have lots of time, I'll explain it to you. Inspector, when did you find this out? We've known it for years, only we don't broadcast. Young man, you handled him like a master. I thought for a minute you were going to tell him the real answer. Mr. Conroy, that was the real answer. Dezetta's the guy I had right along, but I guess I was wrong. Why, you can't be. Norris must be wrong. So that's the reason for those Dezetta entries I found in the captain's logbook. What do you say? Does that is just a fictitious character? It's all clear to me now. Oh. Look, Van. Maybe Captain Weatherby committed suicide. Yeah, he threw the hatchet up in the air and he caught it on the back of his neck. He was a juggler. This can't be true. It's just a bad dream. Yeah, I'm pinching myself too, Mr. Conroy, but it hurts. Millions of people are waiting for Conroy's cold compound to tell them who killed Captain Weatherby. You've got to tell them, Van, even if you have to confess it yourself. That's no good. Because in 1930, I was a woodcraft boy, Beaver Hut number three, Schenectady. I like this compass they gave me for being the best woodchuck. Never mind that. You'll have to try going over the case again. I went over with a fine comb, but all that showed up were a few gray hairs and Dezetta. So what are we going to do? I'll think of something. Maybe I should bump myself off and have the secret die with me. That doesn't solve my problem. Just a suggestion. Well, I've got a better one. You go down to the Black Joker right now and see what you can find there. Mr. Conroy, I went down there two weeks ago. It's nothing but a deserted old hulk. I know, but it's the scene of the crime. And you might be lucky enough to run right into the answer. Now, come on, get going. Well, I don't feel that lucky, but I'll give it a whirl. Good luck, Van. Keep a stiff upper lip. What's going to keep the low one from sagging? It's that Van Duren. I'll tear him apart. What do you mean by coming in here dressed like that, Mr. Gilpin? Listen, Mr. Conroy. Where have you been? And don't tell me it was your voice I heard reading a commercial. I'll say it wasn't. And I'm in no mood for your silly pranks. Do I look like I'm enjoying it? Get a load of this for a dirty low-down trick. I received this invitation to a masquerade at the mayor's home. So I rented this whole layer. And with lollipops, too. As I rang the bell, his honor's bodyguard grabbed me and waltzed me downtown. When I claimed I was a radio announcer, they tossed me in the clink. And in the psychopathic ward, too. I don't doubt it. What's Van Buren got to do with this? Listen, I can smell one of his corny gags a mile. Where did he go, Mr. Conroy? If I remember, you thought it was very funny when you put that porcupine in his bed. Well, at least that was an intimate little gag. It didn't interfere with his work. No, but something else did. Yeah? What happened? We're in trouble. Serious trouble. I don't care what happens to Van Buren after Friday night, but until then, he's got a problem to solve. Don't tell me he hasn't got the answer. No. <laughs> so the genius tripped over his veil. What? <laughs> I mean, that's too bad, Mr. Conroy. What's he gonna do? I don't know. Anyway, I sent him down to the Black Joker to see if he could find a clue. That's a good idea, Mr. Conroy. It's a very good idea. Won't you start, Miss Woods? Well, it doesn't seem to. It's funny. She ain't flooded. The rotor in the distributor is missing. Well, maybe it jarred loose and fell off. Not the rotor. You have to take it off. And it was swiped within the hour because it was running perfect when I backed it up. That's funny. 
Well, how long will it take you to fix it? Oh, not long, if I can find a place around here open. Well, I'll go over to the coffee shop and have dinner while you're getting one. Okay. Hello? Lonesome Heart Social Club? This is Euclid Brown. I want to place a bed at High Lear tomorrow. Yeah, two bits across the board on stormy weather. But if it clears up before post time, switch it over to Sunshine Sadie. You clip? I have to call you back. Evening, boss. Nice broadcast. Can you listen? Oh, no, sir. I never do. It gives me the heebie jeebies. Well, that's the idea of it. It ain't my idea. You know, Euclid, sometimes I look at you and wonder. And then again, I look at you and wonder. I wonder what he's wondering about when he's wondering. What a guy. He's got that certain nothing. Boss, do you think you're done right in messing with that Weatherby case? Why not? I was afraid of this one. I can feed it in my bones. That's rheumatism. Forget it, Euclid. I broadcast 12 of them already and nothing's ever happened. That's just it. This is the 13th one. Did you say 13? 12 and 1, I can add. Pack some food and get the car out. We're taking a trip. We're going out to the Black Joker at Hurricane Point. You mean that murder ship? Yes, and we're leaving right away. Oh, please, boss, I don't want to go out there. There's nothing to be afraid of, Euclid. The old ship has been deserted for years. Why don't we just leave it that way, Mr. Van? Euclid, I said there's nothing to worry about. Boss, you don't think I was yellow? Are you kidding? Go on, get the car out. <laughs> Ten minutes after the Springdale Bank was held up, Sheriff Lem Holder ordered Buckaroo Bob brought back dead or alive. With cries of, string him up, I got a rope, the posse thundered out of town. Buckaroo Bob rode his pinto toward the Pecos country. He aimed to head off Poncho and his band at Thorny Creek before they cashed the gold. Buckaroo Bob's honor was at stake, for he was accused of leading the gang that held up the bank. Poncho, with his band of outlaws, emptied the bags of gold in a blanket. Oh. Why is that, Coney? Sticking in a phony gunshot for no reason at all. You ready, Euclid? Oh, boss, why do we have to go down to the Black Jonah when you already got the name of the hatchet man? I've got to get a new one, Euclid, if I have to name you. Oh, it couldn't be me. I was just a little bitty shaver when he chopped down the captain. So was George Washington when he chopped down the cherry tree. <laughs> what a road. You must have built this to make the detour look good. I sure know it's a better one. Why don't you tell me, where is it? On the way to Atlantic City. Look, Euclid, we're going to the Black Joker, now stop moping. I'm about wild getting there. Something tells me I've been driving around in a circle for the last hour. I wondered why I was getting dizzy. That's not the reason. Well, there she is. That old ship could only talk. If she do, I ain't gonna be here to answer. What's that? It's a foghorn. Sound like Gable to me, boss. Let's get it. Bring the luggage. We're going aboard. Homes are blowing and boats that don't go nowhere. Just ain't natural. You think we better, boss? Yes, before we get pneumonia. That ain't what's warning me. Excuse me, Post. What's that? Chicken of the sea. Flying tuna fish? Yeah, no, seagulls. room that isn't right. Everything ain't right to me, boss. I know. It's that lamp. It's planning to pick on beside the lamp. Yeah, but it's lit and moving. Maybe the hatchet man lit it. 
What, ten years ago and still burning? I don't know about that, but it's still swinging. Somebody must have just been here. Lambs don't light by themselves. Look! There ain't no fish there. That's the one that got away. Hey, boss, what happened to this one? Snakes playing football. Uh-oh. Duck down. I almost got conclusion of the brain. You mean concussion? I mean conclusion. That's the end. So long, boss. Just a minute, Euclid. Isn't this my hat? Yes. I didn't want to wear your good one. Oh, fine. I'd ask you for my suspenders, only I'm afraid my pants would fall down. There's that home again. Must be the last call for going to show. Now, will you calm down, Euclid, and stay close to me? Mr. Van, if I was in the close, I'd be in front of you. Turn on, delight. It is on. Did I was going blind. First time I ever saw a blackout with eyes. Looks like somebody's been playing hopscotch. That's where the cops found the body. Let's get to work. Unpack that bag. Yes. Hey, boss, look here. That hole wasn't made by no mouse. It's a bullet hole. And if you ask me, it has your name on it. Don't be silly. Or are you silly? I ain't this time. I used to get that. Okay. Cortland. Say, uh, Miss Woods take her car out tonight? Yeah, she just left a minute ago. she say where she was going? Hurricane Point. Hurricane Point? That's what she said. Thanks. Okay. Chuck! Hey, Chuck, come here. Yeah. Take a look at this thing. That tire's been cut. Well, I'll be dogged. Now, who do you suppose to do a thing like that? Yeah, what goes on around here? Well, I'll get the jack and change it for you. All right, Euclid, sunny side up. Turn a little more on your stomach, Euclid. Yeah. That's it, now hold it there. Wait a minute. Who am I supposed to be? Captain Weatherby. And who are you supposed to be? I'm the murderer. Uh oh. I'm not going to throw the hatchet. But you might accidentally drop it. All right, I'll do it without the hatchet. But maybe you could do it without me. Why do you think I brought you along? That's the mystery I was trying to solve. Killer must have come through this door. Then again, he could have squeezed through this porthole. No, that isn't right, because the captain was hacked outside, dragged himself in, and collapsed on the floor. Mr. Van, why did you have to think out loud? And again, how did this old blood stain get here? Please, Mr. Van, don't talk like that. It's wet. You mean that's a f f f fresh blood stain? You don't see a w w w wet paint sign hanging on it, do you? No, sir. That's funny. Looks awful pale. Maybe the guy was anemic. Thank you. 
nervous, you little. Hey, nervous boss. Then stop biting my nails. Time for picking. <laughs> the first day a man is a guest, the second a burden, the third a pest. A hint to the wise is sufficient. How do you like that? For my money, a hint's more than sufficient. We've got to work fast, you could lock that door. Yes. We don't want to become no pest. I sure don't like that guy's looks. He just looks tough. Tough enough to be the hatchet man. No, he established an alibi. Anyway, I'd hate to meet up with him. Don't worry, you won't. He's been dead for two years. That's good. Sit down, Euclid. I want to check the size of these shoes. Put them on. Whose was they? The killer's. Mr. Van, I don't want to be in his shoes. All right, put these on. Whose is them? The man who was murdered. Give me the white ones. All right. If it fits, boss, it ain't necessarily so. If it fits, it means the man was your size and weight. But not my color. Euclid, I think we got something here. Uh, tell us, little bull creep, uh, how long since you've been ashore? Not since you sailed away in 1861. 1861? Time flies, doesn't it? Tell me, uh, was Lincoln elected? He sure was. And there ain't gonna be no more slaving. No more slaving? That's a scoop. No, Eli. Since you went a slaving, the years have drugged by like a ship in the calm. But now that we're getting married, it was worth it. Every minute of it. <laughs> She's nuttier than a fruitcake. I'll bake you one. The finest fruitcake you ever had. <gasps> oh, oh. It might be a long jack. Did you say long jack? Get this character. He lives alone and looks it. What are you drifting around here for, you sniveling old pelican? Me and Eli's getting married, and you try stopping us this time, Long Jack. And to help me, I'll have you hung for what you've done. Stir your blab and I'll grab you. Oh, well, wait a minute. Th that's no way to treat a nice old lady. Get along to the galley before I hang it to the yard arm. <laughs> You ain't in command of this floating coffin tonight, Long Jack. Eli Weatherby's back, and he'll be on the bridge. Shut up! 
If you were a little bigger, Euclid, I'd punch that guy right in the nose. Haven't I seen your picture on a bottle of iodine? What? I mean, uh, was that the little woman? No, that's my little sister. A harmless old witch, but she runs clean off her course every once in a while. I say, uh, do you live here? I'm the owner of this ship, and I'll sit to give you any lover what questions it. Who questioned it? Did you? But don't look at me. Just so you know who's in command. All right. Uh, look, pal, uh, did you know Captain Weatherby? I was his first mate when they struck him down. That's when I took command. See, what about your kid sister? What's buzzing with her? Oh, Meg here, she and Eli Weatherby was to be married. And when they butchered Eli, something cracked in her crow's nest. She can't get her compass bearings ever since. She should take something. We tried everything. She just lost her ballast. It's too bad. Mentally unballast. Yeah. I suppose uh, you were on the ship when the captain was murdered. I ain't seen I was, and I ain't seen I warrant. Well, that settles that. Oh. You know anything about this? Where'd you get it? It came by Titsy Flat. I'll bet Meg sent it. Meg? She's always sending letters. Playing post office, eh? Yeah, loves to. What's that? They're singing again. Who? Slaves. Slaves? Yeah, hundreds of them. You can kill them, but you can't kill their spirits. Take it easy, chum. I don't go for ghosts. They don't bother me none either, since I got used to them. Please, Mr. Vance, let's go. Where? Here. This, uh, this stain, Long Jack, is it, uh, is it real blood? Sure it is. Captain Weatherby's been trying to get it off for years. But it's wet. And it won't never dry till they get the lover what done him in. Uh, have you, uh, have you any idea who might have killed the old captain? What's that you're saying? I was just asking if... There she blows! Whales! Must be Moby Dick! Moby Dick? Thought John Barrymore killed him 15 years ago. If you ask me, you've just been talking to the hatchet man in person. Hatchet man? Are you kidding? He looks like an old pipe cleaner I once threw away. Unpack that food, Euclid. Looks like we're gonna be here for some time. I just seen a ghost in one of them slaves. Where? Where? On the ship. Cut the clowning. Don't say that. I seen him, so help me. Okay, Euclid, I believe you. Boss? Will you stop bothering me, please? He's back again. He's gone again. Don't tell me a man of your intelligence believes in ghosts. I do now. Euclid, everybody has someone. And I have you. Mr. Ben? What now? Someone's at the door. Crawling Hotfoot. There's something screwy around here, or I'm cuckoo. Ain't nothing wrong with you, boss. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure. You stay here. Alone?
No. Some twosome. Mr. Bad, that man's here again. <laughs> okay, Stella, get the flying bats ready. Oh, now look, Norbert, I'm tired. That was a tough initiation we did last night. We still got a whole trunk full of magic to spring on him. What does Gilpin want for 20 bucks? The thief of Baghdad? Now, Stella, remember, we're troopers. Even here, the show must go on. Besides, if we do a good job in Van Buren, maybe we can get some radio work out of Gilpin. <laughs> I bet you've been seeing things again. You can lead odds on that one, Mr. Bear. <laughs> May sound funny, but I believe you. The show's over. Come on out. Going home now? No, not until I get the answer. What we need is some black coffee. Here, make a big pot of it. Where? Down the galley, of course. Take my flashlight. Mr. Vance? Yeah. For the first time since I've been in your service, sir, I've got to refuse. If it'll help, I'll go with you. That's a little help, but a very little. Euclid, I don't know what I'd do without you, but I'd love to try. Interesting, isn't it? As long as you stay with me, it is. Hmm, what service? Little Meg must be fixing a wedding supper. Just add some coffee and we're all set. Don't you think you better ask the first? Don't be silly. The old hag's probably out on a haunting trip. News. Say, this is terrific. What a play. What a part for me. The Frogman. Not bad. But get a load of this. Van Buren's got a dame up there. No, really? Yeah, and she's pretty, too. Well, now, ain't that just ducky. We'll give her a case of the jitters, too. Can we get paid extra? Well, throw it in. Gilpin's a nice guy. This place is beginning to give me the jitters. What you need is a drink. There's a bottle down in the galley. That's not a bad idea. Miss, just fix a little coffee. I hope you don't mind. Help yourself, me hearties. Thank you, ma'am. That's awful nice of you. Who are you talking to, Euclid? Why, little Miss Mag, of course. I don't see anybody. Did you say you don't see nobody? Anybody. Uh, miss, would you mind making yourself more, uh, more obvious? When Long Jack wants his rum, there's no time to tarry. I understand perfectly. <laughs> You understand what perfectly? 
You mean you still didn't see nobody, hear nobody? Maybe I imagined the whole thing. Mr. Van. What is it? Does you see me? Plain as night. Good girl, Stella. Well, we finally drove Mr. Van Buren nuts. What do you mean? Strangest thing, he kept looking right at me and insisting to his valet that I wasn't there. Oh, that's fine. That's just what Mr. Gilpin wants. Yeah, but it kind of gives me the creeps. Well, to you, Lady Hoodie. <laughs> hey, right where you are, sister. What is it? I, I, I was just looking around. I'm back. I know who you are. Where's that package you got from Gruber? Oh, it's nothing. It was Stow only... the gab, lady. Hand over that package. But it's mine. It was given to me. You better give it to me, Miss Woods. Don't move. <laughs> what a scene. Is this the best Gilpin can do? And that makeup. Are you kidding? The character you're playing is dead. Cut the gab. You act like a couple of amateurs. This ain't an act, Mr. Van Buren. Uh -huh, it's improper to point. Emily Post wouldn't like it. Don't ever take a job like this again. You're terrible. And don't come back. I've got a lot of work to do. I hope you don't mind my criticizing you, but with your face, you should do lighter things. You know, you'd be great in a musical. I can just picture your name in lights. But by the way, what is your name? Uh, Betty Woods. Are you H.H. Van Buren? That's right, your favorite radio boogeyman. Oh, the way you handled that man was magnificent. Oh, it was nothing. I once picked it at Jesse James, single-handed. You aren't taking this very seriously, are you? Now, you read that line very well. You know, you're the best one so far, but your supporting cast is really brutal. Well, I'm not an actress. Well, you've got possibilities, but you'll never get any place playing corny parts like this. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Van Buren. I came here because I inherited the ship. Oh, the plot thickens. <laughs> now, during intermission, would you join me in a cup of coffee? I certainly could use some. Euglid, go down the galley and get some more dishes. All by myself. Oh, well, here. Take this if it'll make you feel easier. Oh, no, sir. If anything happened, I'd only be weighted down with nothing heavy. All right. Take the flashlight. May I take your coat? Oh, thank you. Tell me, what's, uh, what's the next scene in Gilpin's obnoxious opera? I don't know who you think I am, but I'm really Captain Weatherby's grandniece. Tonight, I found out he left everything to me. Yeah, everything but the headache. He left that for me. Naturally, I've been very interested in your broadcast of the captain's murder. Thanks. Please sit down. You know, it's strange, Will. It gives me this dog collar, this old ship, and then it says he leaves me the whole world and everything in it. Big heart of Eli. It does sound crazy, doesn't it? Yes. There's something more. It says here I must take a trip. Where to, Niagara Falls? No, the same one he took, September 3rd, 1929. Well, there's his logbook. Help yourself. I already did. That's the craziest part of it all. The trip was over 10,000 miles long, and he made it all in one day. It doesn't make sense. Makes as much sense as this dog collar. How does this thing fit into this silly drama? It was found on Captain Eli's dog, Samson. You've muffed a line, Miss Woods. It says here the dog's name is Josh, not Samson. See? But the dog's name was Samson. My father used to tell me about him. Well, I don't know what this 721 means. Well, that's in case he bit someone. They could get his license number. A dog collar. Captain Weatherby sure had a strange sense of humor. Wait, David, what are you doing here? Aha, uh -huh, the leading man, eh? Chuck drove me down. Come on, honey, get your hat and coat. I'm going to take you home. Oh, boy, is he hammy. Oh, David, this is Mr. Van Buren, the radio commentator. Uh, Mr. Cortland. I do, Mr. I never liked you on the radio, and I don't like you now. Come to think of it, you're kind of revolting yourself. Come on, darling. Now, wait a minute. She's not leaving here until I'm through with this investigation. Mister, you're through right now. Oh, yeah? David, you shouldn't have done that. The man who lifts the veil, huh? Mr. Van? Mr. Van? Mr. Van! Oh! The hatchet man done got it. Mr. Van! Mr. Van, speak to me. What Mr. happened? What happened? What are you doing? I'm checking for the hatchet. I remember now. Where'd they go? This gag has gone too far. Mr. Van, this ain't no gag. I seen that man dragging that lady out of here. He's a hatchet man. Well, why don't you slug him? Me? 
Well, I had my hands full of dishes. I didn't want to drop them. Lucky for him. Hey, who are you? What do you want? We're leaving here. What about it? Now, just a minute. I'm the owner of this ship. Since when? Since tonight. Oh, Long Jack McWhorter just sort of his man. Oh, this place is alive with screwballs. Let's get out of here. Oh, no, David. I'm going to find out what this is all about. Shall I heave the lover over side, Mum? You and who else? Now, there's news getting excited, old boy. Hey, anybody here? This place is getting busier than the Albany night boat. Ahoy! Hello, sail! Mr. Gilpin send you? Mr. Gilpin. What are you doing here? My car ran into a ditch in the fog. We saw this ship in We the... ain't running no hotel. We should only stay until the fog lifts. Well, all right. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Oh, now, look, darling, you don't really believe that hidden diamond stuff, do you? I just want to make sure, David. So, now we're getting carriage trade. Well, good evening. I'm Professor Bascom, Waldo Bascom. And this is Mr. Flack. A Jonathan Flack. And you'll have to pardon us, gentlemen. We're on our way back to New York. Well, in this fog, I'm afraid you'll have to use a divining rod to find your way. It would be an extremely hazardous drive. There, you see now, David. We'll just have to stay. Uh, if you'll excuse me for a minute, gentlemen, I have to see a man about a dog collar. Oh, young oh. man, are you honeymooners? No, Miss Woods owns this boat. Oh, then she must be the grandniece of Captain Weatherby. Of course. I remember reading about her when the old gentleman was killed. Oh, you got a pretty keen man. What's that? Reasons. Good for you. Puts iron in your blood. Who wants iron? I want blood. Oh, a guy could starve to death from a sock on a jaw like that. Mm -hmm. Was that a man or a mule that hit me? I don't know, boss. I only seen him from the back. Then it must have been a horse. Chilly in here. Do you feel a draft? If I'm shivering, boss, it ain't because I'm cold. Come in. Oh, pardon me. I thought it was Joe Muscles. I'm awfully sorry for what happened, Mr. Van Buren. Oh, that's all right. What's a little case of lockjaw? Just part of the show. You don't mind if I fracture his skull for the second act curtain, do you? I'll see that David apologized. Yeah, you ought, to, you ought to take his Lone Ranger button away from him. I came back to get the dog collar. Oh, I guess your boyfriend's cold without it. <laughs> It's gone. It's funny, I just put it there. Look, the window. Somebody must have reached in it and... It must be the man who threatened me. Now I know that dog collar means something. It must mean something. Say, what am I doing falling for this phony baloney of yours? Miss Woods, will you get out of character, please? Whether you believe it or not, there's something valuable hidden on this ship, and I'm going to find it before somebody else does. Slow curtain. Hmm? Never mind, let's get back to work. If it's all the same to you, boss, I'd rather get back to town. I can't leave here till I get the killer's name. Him the China Sea, weighed over 20 pounds, gave us quite a tussle. A very interesting specimen of Anguilla crassipa. Huh? If you'll excuse me, Professor, that isn't Anguilla crassipa, it's Anguilla anguilla. He's right. And <laughs> then you amaze me. Are you a chance an ichthyologist? No, just a book salesman who reads his own merchandise. Bramley treats the subject quite thoroughly in his Adventures at the Bottom. I think I have one in my case. The lovers are walking encyclopedia. Look at that binding, gentlemen. Finest Russian calf. This volume contains hundreds of illustrations, all in color. Well, uh, perhaps later. Oh. How about you, Captain? I don't like fish. Dang those bells, they're running fast again. Well, wouldn't you just like to glance through it? Oh, thank you.
pardon me. I think the Anguilla Crisip is illustrated in here. Just remembered I left my briefcase in the car. Will you excuse me? Uh, hey, just a minute. Is Mr. H.H. H. Van Buren here? I really don't know. He just came aboard. Well, make up your mind. I beg your pardon, sir, but haven't we met somewhere before? Hmm. Have you ever been arrested? Indeed not. Oh, sorry, mister. Just force a habit. I've been a policeman for 15 years. <laughs> well, it's amazing. You look exactly like someone I once knew. Well, I'm sorry for him if he looks like me. Who are you? Say, who are you grabbing? There's nothing to get excited about, old boy. Uh, who are you? You tell him, uh, Professor. Hmm. The fish ain't the only queer specimens aboard this tub. Eli Weatherby, captain and owner, chartered by Manuel Dezetta. Why should he use two names? Is you asking me both? Do you know? No, sir. Then I'm not asking. I don't know what's the matter with me. I'm a half-wit. Here's the other half. Uh, hello, what do you mean? Hope I'm not intruding. Why should you be an exception? Where's your crystal ball? I'm a tea leaves man. Yeah, very funny. You know, Inspector, you've got the makings of a great failure. Mister, would you like a cup of coffee? You never saw a cop that wasn't hungry. What brings you down here, Hawkshaw? Well, a fella can never tell. Even you might stumble onto something. So just in case, I want to be in on it before you spill it over the radio. Oh, thanks. Anything new? Not yet. By the way, what makes you so sure that Weatherby and Dezetta were one man? We checked Dezetta's fingerprints and they were the same as the captain's. Simple? Yeah. I wish you guys would put those things on record. Yeah, I'll take it up with Congress. Mm -hmm. They're very busy right now. you go play in the subway. Oh. What happened? Dog collar. Jackson. Oh. Next week, East Lynn. What do you mean? Take a bomb, Mick. That's your terrific. Are you off your nut? Oh, just ignore it, Inspector. It's all part of a rib. A rib, huh? This man's been stabbed. What do you think that is? Ketchup? You can buy that mercuricum in any drugstore. This guy's an actor, and he's pretty awful at that. And he's a dead actor. Holy mackerel. He is dead. Can I say one word? What is it? Help! Yeah, were you waiting for him to tell you who the killer is? That name he was trying to tell us before, wasn't it Jackson Volker? That's right. Well, that's a picture you were scribbling on. Then he really is Mac Wolf. That's right, I remember him now. He was one of Weatherby's crew, but we thought he was dead. Well, it was a little late, but he made it. Yeah, it looks like your radio programs brought the boys back for a little get-together. Well, he started off with a nice game of mumley peg. The dog collar, maybe he's... Yeah, hold on. Uh, clean as a whistle. Now, all I have to do is to find the guy with the collar, and I got the dog who killed Weatherby. Now, just a minute. This is my department. I'm going out to phone headquarters, and you keep your hands off, see? What do you think I'm here for, a rest cure? Listen, lame brain. Cracking this case is more important than entertaining a lot of radio bugs. Now, don't you try to leave this boat, or you'll broadcast from the morgue. Get me? Euclid. Come on, lame brain. I'll show that lame brain who's a lame brain. Wait a minute, boss. Does I have to come now, Mr. Van? Yes, unless you want to stay here with this dead body. I don't want to stay here with nobody. <gasps> oh, Eli, it's you. Bring down the curtain, Trilby. The show's all over. I've been wise to you all night. Where's Dracula? Dracula? If you mean Norbert... I mean that phony captain. I want him to take me through the ship. 
He left with that detective. Why? Has anything happened? Just a murder, that's all. A murder? Oh, I told him we should leave when those strange men came aboard. What men? They arrived a little while ago, two of them. They're in the saloon. They look like professional men. But why did that detective take no of it? He didn't do it. Honestly, I was with him all Save the, the hysterics, Bernhardt. Not a word to anyone and stay right here. Yes. And you, Euclid, we're going into that saloon and I want you to act as if nothing had happened. I ain't that good an actor. Neither am I. Come on. Good evening. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all. Were you caught in the fog, too? Yes, we're all on the same boat, aren't we? Very appropriate. Yes, very appropriate. Who's the character with the mink bib? Uh, that is Professor Bascom. My name's Jonathan Flack. I do. What are you doing, Professor? Playing hooky? Professor Bascom is a scientist, not a teacher. Oh, I bet you he could make a nasty Mickey Finn. I'm an oceanographer. An ocean what? Oceanography is the science that treats of oceanic life and phenomena. To be more explicit, thalassography. So you won't talk, eh? Comfortable there, isn't it, huh? Guess you've been sleeping there quite a while. No, only a few minutes. How long have you two gentlemen been here? Oh, I should say Just a minute. What is this, a cross-examination? Oh, don't be silly, Professor. I'm only making conversation. What's going on around here? Where's the woods? Well, look who's here. Hit and run Harry. And where have you been? Now, listen, there's a man's body out there. He's been murdered. murdered. I want to know. Just a minute. I know all about it. Once more, I'm going to find out who did it. So that's why you're applying us with questions. Right you are, Professor. And I'm going to ask some more. So you better have the answers ready. You answer me. Where's Miss Woods? She's out looking for diamonds. And incidentally, what have you been doing? The same thing. Why? Oh, nothing. I believe you. But only temporarily. Where have you been for the last half hour, Mr. Bones? I've been in this room ever since we came aboard. Oh, you have, eh? That's correct. I've been right here with him all the time. Except for the few minutes I was gone for my briefcase. Oh, so you did leave here. How long were you gone? How long does it take to go out to the car and back? How long does it take to shove a knife between a man's ribs? Uh, the professor dissects fish, not people. Look, Mr. Britannica, whoever killed that man stole a dog collar from him. So I'm going to frisk everybody here. Oh, you just think you are not... It necessary to search anyone. Is this what you're looking for? So you admit you did it? Don't be ridiculous. I found it outside on the deck. When you went for your briefcase, I suppose. No, when I was returning with it. I wonder if these are real jewels. Solid glass. Just like his chin. Listen, if you ever went to a mine read, he'd charge a half price. You mean someone killed a man just for a dog collar? It's been done for less, Mr. Flack. It's funny, this tag says Josh 721. Couldn't be the guy's batting average. Did you say Josh 721? I didn't say DiMaggio 357. Must have meant Joshua 721. That would be a biblical concordance. The book of Joshua, 7th chapter, 21st verse. It could be. The captain spent a lot of time reading the Bible. I think I have one in my case. Joshua, Joshua, 21. Here it is. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. Hid in the earth in the midst of my tent? Well, that would simply mean where he lived. That's it. There is something hidden on this boat. Hidden the earth in the midst of my... T it could be anywhere. I know. The will that Betty has. The logbook. Euclid, don't let anybody leave till I get back. Could I make you gentlemen a cup of coffee? Mr. Van? Mr. Van? Mr. Van? Mr. Van said for y'all to stay in his room till he gets back. Where'd they go? The minute you left, they ducked down there like rats in a hole. The professor, too? Yes, and he left the others at the post. The professor's Jackson Volker, and he's after Miss Woods. Come on.
was that? Sounds like a baseball bat to me. The Yankees must be training early. Miss Woods. Your shadow, boss. My shadow, huh? If it is, it ain't doing what I'm doing. Slamming diamonds. You may go this time. Shh. Daddy! Oh, she'd only yell again. That was no yell, boss. in that will? Most of it. Why? Well, it may give us the key to the whole works. What do you mean? I mean, it might add up with that screwy trip he told about in the logbook. If the logbook is still there. Come on, hurry. There he is. Oh, hey. All right, Mr. Volker. What's happened to him? The hatchet man must have got him. 
Where's the will? He got it. Find the logbook. Who got it? Hurry. Up here, quick. Well, it looks like we missed the boat. They didn't get the logbook. That trip the captain took, do you remember the date of it? That's it, September 3rd, 1929. How could this tell where the treasure was? It says he sailed from New York to Marseille, then through the canal to Hong Kong, and wound up in Portuguese Angola. All in one day. It's impossible. Some kind of a code, all right, but I don't get it. If you pardon me, Miss Wood, your old uncle was shy of some of his marbles. I'd say most of them. Euclid, will you please stop spinning that thing? I'm dizzy enough already. Excuse me. Do that again. But you just told me to stop. I changed my mind. Do you mind? Oh, I don't mind. Now stop it. But you said spin it. I said stop it. Hidden the earth in the midst of my tent. I've got it. That globe is the earth, and this ship is his tent. Mr. Van, you ain't feeling well. Better you stand over there and turn the globe as I tell you. Start in New York. All right. Now to Marseille. Now to Hong Kong. Did you hear that? It's a combination. Easy now. To Portuguese Angola. Stuck. Look. The diamonds. I knew it. Where's David? Never mind David. He saw plenty of diamonds tonight. All right, put him down. Now step away from that globe. Turn in your costume, man, but the show's closed. There's been a couple of murders here tonight. One move out of you and it'll be three. Oh, no, but thank goodness you're safe. <laughs> Inspector Norris. So you're allergic to diamonds, too. They're mine. They were stolen from me. Stolen from you? That's not true. He's been after those diamonds ever since Weatherby got them in Portuguese Angola. He's... Back up and stay healthy, stupid. You're Jackson Volker, aren't you? Yes. Did you kill Mac Wolf? And you killed Captain Weatherby, too, didn't you? No. Then who did? Did you think you were playing with children? You'll get the chair for this. And 30 days from impersonating an officer, Mr. DeZetta. <laughs> Inspector Norris. Pardon me, but the penalty for impersonating an officer is six months. I have a Laswell's Law Manual in my case. Keep it there. Somebody clocked me on the head. Oh, I wonder who it could have been. Oh, David, the diamonds are here. Look. Oh, what beautiful specimens. These are the finest Mexican rock crystals I've ever seen. Mexican what? In Winslow Fitch's semi-precious gems at a glance, he devotes two whole chapters to this. I think I have one in my case. You mean they aren't valuable? Oh, on the contrary. I'd say this collection would bring as much as oh, ninety dollars, maybe a hundred. Incidentally, Jerk Dalton, what flag are you flying? I beg your pardon? What's your racket? Oh, I represent the Star Publishers Limited. I picked up the late professor about two miles down the road. He claimed his car ran into a ditch. So why did you pick on this place? No, well, Professor Bascom suggested it, and I haven't sold one book. That's too bad. Slug me and steal my wardrobe, will you? Come on, Stella, we're leaving. There's something suspicious going on around here. Are you kidding? Fed, when did you first suspect that policeman was no policeman? I knew it all the time. Were you sure? Was I sure? Just as sure as this storm is over. 